你讲话。Got reminded of language. Right. <coughs> I'm going to first pick on something. Did something. Last time I told you. Please, if you want your students to improve, you have to speak English all the time. Now, as soon as they come in to as soon as they, you know, when they leave, they're getting the bus all the time. Um, here, basically, with me and Michael, we've drilled it and drilled it into the teachers here. I mean, even Nancy, whose English isn't perfect, but she's got better, she will do her best to make sure that, you know, what are you doing? Why didn't you say sorry? You know, anything that you can use English, use it as much as possible. You know, I told you before, I know it's easier to quickly switch to Chinese because they'll understand you very quickly, but in the long run, you're hurting yourselves because they will always revert back to Chinese if they have the possibility. So English is really, it's not like math or science where you just memorize, memorize, memorize. It's about constantly using it. So, I mean, as I said before, my Chinese was basically learned by listening and talking. Um, you know, I can't read, or, well, I can now read some words, but it's again, it's basically every time I look at them, I know what they are, and it's repetition, repetition, and that's what English is. So it's about always using it as much as possible. Is the video on? Can I hide? Mm -hmm. Number one, I've got that. <laughs> um, Incredible English is actually not our favorite book. <laughs> uh, the reason is, is because it's quite... Um, how, how, I'm not sure how to explain it. It's quite, not empty, but... There's a lot of room to sort of not do anything. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this better. Um, you know, with grammar, you've constantly got things to, to do and follow sentence patterns. And if they don't understand, you know, you just do more sentence patterns and follow the rules. With something like this, it's a little bit more difficult. And you've really got to put a little bit more imagination into it to make it more interesting. So when I look at incredible, this is what, for me, it's teaching. And so, mainly, the incredible is about oral work. This is the time when your students should be speaking all the time. Not necessarily reading, but actually conversation. Using this book, I don't do any writing when I'm teaching incredible. So there's no worksheets. I mean, I know there is a, I've got number six here. There is a workbook you can use, and sometimes I might use it, but very, very rarely uh, I, I don't use it. And if there's a CD, I have no idea. <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> yes, I'm here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so this is mainly about these ones. So vocabulary, uh, conversation, Sentence patterns, and then, of course, the, the extra knowledge at the end there, which you can do quite a lot with. This is also sometimes some extra knowledge, depending on, you know, what uh, um, story it's teaching. So today we're doing at the theater. Right. So first of all, vocabulary. Um, for this one, if th this is level five. So for me personally, unless you have a, a class that didn't do kindergarten, these vocabulary should be extremely easy. Okay? So it's more about do they know how to use them? And the biggest problem, you know, sometimes people say, you know, oh, uh, teacher Michael, teacher Lisa, your classes are always really smart. It's not fair. 
sometimes having a smarter class is more difficult. How do you make something like this, which they understand in a second, work a bit longer? And also, when something is so easy, your smart kids will make mistakes. Always. Because, well, this is so easy, I don't need to pay attention. Right? So, um, this one is about, basically, the, the sentence pattern is uh, past continuous. So you need to understand the sentence patterns, past continuous. And then go through here, do the washing up. So also, for this one, The, the words, that, these are verbs obviously, the verbs that we used when we're saying we're doing something. So, do the washing up, do the laundry. So when you're teaching this, if, it, if they do get it very quickly, you can start adding. What else do we do? Right? We do <coughs> homework, we do the laundry, we do the washing up. Um, anything else that they can think of, what do we do? What do we make? Make the bed. All right? And then they'll say, but, you know, so you, you try and make a joke. Do you actually put the bed together with a hammer and nails? Do you make it? No. All right? It's putting the, the sheet on, making the bed look nice. What else do you do? You make coffee. You know, so you can use these words because this is often used wrongly. Teacher, he used me. <laughs> How did he use you? <laughs> did he use you to wash the floor? Uh, you know, so when you hear those things, that's another thing. Kids will often make mistakes. Make a joke out of it and then, you know, turn it around. He didn't use you. He pushed you. He, he hit you. He, he took your book. He didn't use you. Right? Because that's a direct translation, right? So it's a, a quick way for kids. So you often hear, you know, teacher, he used me. Which could be translated into something quite rude. Uh, so make, so when would we use use? Alright, um, use something to do something else. So use the broom to sweep the floor. Use um, the hot water to make a coffee. Right, so using these words, what do you put? What do you tidy? What do you clean? What's the difference between clean and tidy? Anybody? What is the difference between tidy and clean? Make things in order, put things in order. Right, and? Right, so what example can I use for my kids in a classroom? To tell them, to help them understand the difference between tidy and clean. In a classroom, what do your kids? Drawer. Right, so what do you do? And then what do you also do? Wash your hands. Uh-uh. Clean your Right. Okay. So tidy. You know, put your books away, put things in order, throw away the trash. You tidy your drawer and you clean your table by getting the spray and washing it. Alright, so everything they do from day to day, when you're given these books, <coughs> whether it be grammar, reading or whatever, Take them out. Think. What do my students not understand? Where are their mistakes made quite often in class time, in break time when you hear them? You know, these ones you can use the opportunity to teach something else. It's not always about, I have to teach these nine uh, phrases and that's it. It's about using this and expanding their English, especially if they learn quicker. If they're slower, teach less. But still, these are very important words um, to help them get their English more fluid, more fluent. Uh, water the flowers. You know, water the grass. Do you water your coffee? No. Right? But you add water into it, right? But you're not watering it because it doesn't grow. 
right? Do you water your children? <laughs> right? They grow. So things like this, you know, talk to them and explain to them because kids will use logic like that. I remember years and years ago, um, a, a home student I was teaching and she's like, she's trying to think, airport. She can't think of that word. It's gone from her memory for some reason. She's like, the house where the airplanes live. I'm like, okay, I understand what you're talking about. So she thought about it, but then I had to explain. Can airplanes live? Right? They don't live. They don't breathe. They can't live there. So, you know, that's good. I understand, and I appreciate her trying to use English to explain to me. But then I correct it and, and help her understand why we can't use the word live and why it's not a house. You know, and then she can understand and find the other words. Um, you know, so, you know, they might often say, um, oh, something I really, really hate, and I, and I, and I hear sometimes my co-teachers use it too. <laughs> not, not this co-teacher, obviously. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's this? Ma. Huh? Ma. And why do some people say use the cloth? <laughs> All right, so this is a ma, right? What's this? Right? Sponge, cloth. Use the right words. Okay? Sometimes I hear teachers say, you know, mop your table. <laughs> I can assure you my mother would shoot me if I tried to mop a table. In my house I probably do, because it's like mop the floor, mop the table, mop the dogs, mop everything. It's quicker. Um, so using the, the, the right words, teaching them to separate things. <coughs> Thank you. But it's often about, you know, when you start teaching this, when you look at your book and you start teaching this, you'll start to remember. Ah, yeah, and I often use this one. Ah, he used me. You know, um, can I use your pencil? Better to say, can I borrow your pencil? Right? So, of course you can say, I can use my pen. Can you use my pencil? Well, you could use it, but I'm not going to lend it to you. <laughs> right? It's been a bit picky, but do that when you get the sixth grade, not first grade. Um, so, first of all, these words. So, part of the vocabulary, but then they're put into phrases. So they give you the present tense, and here the sentence pattern is the present tense, okay? So you teach it in the present tense, but you've got to understand the next part of the lesson is going to be in past continuous. So what I would do, you know, what are they doing? Oh, they are da 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 right? So, um, and this is quite difficult because they've got to distinguish between man, woman, girl, and boy. And they all look like children to me. Right. So the children are washing the windows. Always good. Make children work. <clears throat> so what are they doing? So I teach them what we'll goes through. They look at the pictures. They raise the hand. Again, uh, with something like this, depending on your class, if they're not people that talk, stand up. All right. When you give me a sentence, you can sit down. And they'll raise their hand. Okay? It's, it's amazing. The brain works when they stand up. So get them to make the sentences just looking at the pictures. Then here, you've got to um, change from the, the true or false, what is right. Um, a man is doing the wind wash, uh, the man is doing the washing. Okay, the man is doing the washing, doing the laundry. Uh, is that correct? No, it's not. It is a woman that's doing the washing. Okay? So get them to say it again. Fall out of bed. <laughs> My Lord Gillian. <laughs> um, again, I would not be reading this. Okay? I, I, I hear other teachers, but it's different. Different teachers have different methods. But for me, we have so much to teach. The most important thing is that they try to use their English as much as possible. So if you're always talking, they don't get that opportunity. So I will tell them, 
you know, read number one and tell me the correct sentence. So they would read, a man is doing the washing. Wrong. A woman is doing the washing. Okay, so they would read both of them and tell me it's wrong. You can even go, you know, oh, it's in the fourth picture. It's number nine, it's number six, whatever. So you can add in sentences if it's too short. If you've got a big class, they've made these sentences, they've done this, but there's still some students standing up, you can say, what's going on in picture one? How many people are working in picture one? There's so many other sentences you can use just from one page. Okay? Again, make mistakes. Let them correct it. Uh, the woman is using the dishes in picture one. She's using the dishes? No. What's she doing? Ah, she's washing the dishes. Understand? Yeah? So make mistakes and let them listen. Because it's also about listening. If you make mistakes, oh look at number, number, picture number four. The, the guy is washing the paper. They're like, huh? 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 And they all go, because washing the paper, they hear that straight away is wrong. Right? That's an obvious one. But then they have to go and look and they're like, no he's not, he's writing. And then they might say, he's writing the paper. Is that right? He's writing on the paper. Or, if they're higher level, you could say, he's taking notes. Right? So he's writing on the paper, that's exactly what he's doing. But what is he doing? He's taking notes. So depending on your level of your class, how much you want to teach. You know, as long as it's correct, if they're lower level, he's writing on the paper, it's fine. But by, this one is five, by this level they should be able to start learning more. They should know taking notes. Okay? So that's what I would do first. Go through these. So this will be vocabulary. After we've done this, I might then, because I already know here is past continuous, so then I'll tell them, okay, it all happened yesterday. Do it all again, stand up, all past tense. All right, picture one, what's the woman doing? What was the woman doing, sorry? She was. So then they've got to do it themselves, change it into past tense. Okay? If in my grammar I'm teaching future tense, I might get them to stand up again and say, go, future tense. All right, she will do something, or she is going to do something, all right? So this is a picture about tomorrow, the future. So always incorporate what else are you learning? Your grammar, your writing, you know, what trouble did they have? With tenses, it's all about repetition, right? Because tenses are so difficult. How many tenses do we have? Present, present continuous, past, past continuous. Present perfect, past perfect, past perfect continuous, present perfect continuous, uh, future, the two different futures, the future perfect, present perfect, <laughs> present perfect, whatever. There's hundreds of them. You don't have that in Chinese. All right? So it's really difficult for them to get it. So give them a time and start making the sentence. Right, this happened yesterday. Okay? So now if I said this happened yesterday, they can say, she washed the dishes. But if I said, this was happening yesterday, she was washing the dishes. Okay? So with the tenses, because it's past continuous, you need to give them a time. Alright? So at 8 p.m. yesterday, I've given them an exact time. At 8 p.m. yesterday, what were they doing? Then they have to, usually when you tell them to do past tense, they'll go directly into normal past tense. So you'll have to coach them. No, what were they doing? Oh, they were washing the dishes. Okay. And then the next one, they'll make a mistake. Oh, uh, he did the laundry. No. What was he doing at 8 p.m.? It's an exact time. Oh, he was doing the laundry. All right, so it's all about continuing, continuing, repetition, continuing. If they make mistakes after number three, then you start 
damaging student. <laughs> <laughs> There'll always be one. So, uh, <coughs> make them put the time into the sentences as well. It's not here. So that they understand when you use it. So past continuous. She was washing the dishes at 8 p.m. yesterday. Or she was washing the dishes at 8 o'clock yesterday evening. However you want to do it. But it's a specific time so they know that's how they use it. All right, then you can say, okay, but I want it in past tense. I don't know what time it happened yesterday. All right, she did the washing yesterday. So switch it up. And again, if you've got a very smart class that can answer things quickly, you know, number one, present tense. Number two, present continuous. Number three, past tense. Number four, past continuous. Number five, future. Number six, present. And they've got to look and think what you're doing. I said, but I want a time. You've got to give me a time. So this is, as I said, the different levels, you can start adding things in. So making their sentences longer. So present tense plus time. Past continuous, no time. All right, so they've got to think. What have you told them to do? And how, what sentence can you give? If one of the students makes a mistake, write it on the board. What's wrong with that? Ah, oh, he should have said, right? She it was, well, she is doing the laundry yesterday at 8 p.m. Quickly write that on the board. What's wrong? Is, it was yesterday. It should be, right? So kids will correct them. Or if you don't want to write it on the board, sometimes it takes a little bit too long, you can get kids to raise their hand immediately. Uh, teacher, he said a mistake. It was. All right, you get a point for finding his mistake. Be careful with that. I'm not a great fan of that because then you get kids going, he said, he said, all day. <laughs> but doing exercises, you can see where they make mistakes. <clears throat> so that will be the first one. This can take you, if you do it like this, explaining how we use them, giving the different examples, asking students, you know, what other things do you do? Right? Oh, we do homework. Oh, we do... I don't know, I can't think now. It's the beginning. <laughs> it's <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> no, it's not work till four. Right? Uh, what do you make? What do you use? What do you put? Put your shoes away. Put your hat on. Put your shoes on. Do you wear your shoes? Another mistake, right? Outside. Wear your shoes quickly. Wear your shoes. <laughs> Put them on. Put your jacket on. Put your hat on. Uh, tidy, clean, making the difference, right? Am I going to tidy the window? <laughs> no. You can't tidy a window, right? So make these examples. You know, pick out so they can understand. And what do you clean? What do you water? And if you can think of others where you hear lots of mistakes, add some more in. So this can take anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes. Okay? Then you go on to the sentence patterns, just what they're learning and finding the mistakes. That will take maybe 10 minutes. Then if you change all the tenses, it's going to take another 30 minutes. Alright, so a two hour lesson with this page is easily done if you expand. Don't just stick to exactly, it tells me to teach this and this. Okay, um, doing the washing, doing the washing up. If you hear me when I'm speaking, I always say do the laundry. I'd write that down. Alright, yeah, of course we say do the washing. But we can also say do the laundry, so they know the difference. All right, doing the washing up. Is it because the washing goes up? No. Why do we call it that? No idea. Uh, we might also say do the dishes. Right? Do the dishes, do the washing up. So other ones, you know, tidy the living room. What other rooms must you tidy? Oh, my bedroom. Oh, my kitchen. Right? Do you all have living rooms? You know, how big is your living room? So much that you can talk to your kids with with this. Get into conversation. That's why I say this book is about conversation. Getting them to talk. The time. If you look, it's olden day, wherever, Georgian period in England by the looks of it. 
Children are washing windows. They are working. You can talk to your kids about that. Eh? How lucky that they are that they do absolutely nothing. No, do they have chores? What chores do they have to do to get pocket money? Right? So what chores? This is work. These kids had to do it. Um, but they might have to do chores, taking out the trash, right? Uh, putting their clothes away. Do any kids do ironing? It's great, get lots of birds. <laughs> Don't really iron. Uh, you can see in this picture here, see if any of you, you should all know. What is that? <laughs> Say that loudly. A laminator. What are they going to do? Laminate their clothes? Wow. You are all so privileged. So creative. You should know what it is. I have no clue what that is. Am I that old? Carol, help me here. That one! This one? I've never seen this before. I didn't see. I didn't see it. Oh my lord! Am I really that old? I would go with laminator. Go with laminator. <laughs> well, in the Georgian period, they didn't have electricity or plastic, sweetheart. So I'm going with it's not a laminator. <clears throat> it's to dry the clothes, to wring out the clothes. No. no. I can't draw to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they wash their clothes by hand, Yes. right? They wash their clothes by hand, and then you wring it, it's still going to be wet, right? So then they lay the clothes in here and turn the handle, and all the water comes out, so it gets drier. Wow, I'm old. <laughs> Taiwan in, in, in Asia. Maybe it's just a British thing then. All right, yeah, it's a, it's a clothes wringer. It rings. Do I need a W for that? No. See, my spelling's off. Yeah, rings out the clothes. So you flatten them, you put it there, and you roll it, and the clothes goes through, and the water comes out. Amazing. <laughs> Wow, if you've learned nothing else today, you've learned what a ringer is. <laughs> really? Okay. Um, so, yeah. At the bottom there, uh, at the bottom of the bed, there's a trunk. Okay, a trunk. Um, they'll all know it, hopefully, from Harry Potter. All right, so Harry Potter, when he goes to school, when he goes to Hogwarts, all his clothes and possessions go into a trunk. They didn't have suitcases back then. All right, so all the different things, you look at the, the things and what will be interesting to the, the kids, you know, what they might have. Um, I was teaching my kids yesterday chest of drawers because they had no idea what a chest of drawers was. And they're sixth grade. Um, do you all know what a chest of drawers is? See? Oh my <laughs> lord! <sighs> wow! Alright, so... In the Harry Potter, this sort of box thing that they used to use, it could either be called a chest or a trunk. Okay? Like the pirates, treasure chest. Yeah? Okay, so in the olden days, basically, all their clothes would go in there. When they traveled, they would take these huge, great big trunks, these chests on the boats, on the ships, and travel. Uh, a bit inconvenient, because you open it up and you've got to take everything out, right? So then it was designed... A world of useless knowledge. So then it was designed to open like that, like a refrigerator. It was turned up on its side. Okay? But still, what are they going to do? So then they put shelves in. Okay? So that, but still, when it's moved up and down, it's going to move all around. So then they made these shelves into drawers. <laughs> Uh, 
my kids love my drawing. <laughs> Alright, so then they made the, the drawers to put in the chest so that everything would stay in place. Okay, even when they traveled. So the chest, they would get onto the boats, they just open the doors, and then they would have the drawers. Okay, so then it became a chest of drawers. <laughs> Explain that to my kids yesterday, right? So it's a chest of drawers. Where does it come from, right? Um, so they, they realized it. So in your bedroom, you've got the, the sideboard with the drawers. You just call it drawers now, right? Yeah, put the clothes in the drawers, but that is actually a chest of drawers. So I know. I'm feeling so old. Um, I basically, I know these things often because my mum loves old things in her house. I'm not. No, yeah, my mum's also 100. No, um, she loves old things, and she had a store and and used to buy antique things. So I know what they're all called. So in the kitchen, do you know what the <laughs> Uh, pass it around in the kitchen what they're cooking on. Does anyone know what that's called? You, again, you don't have that in Taiwan at all. That's a British farm thing. Anybody know what it's called here? So, right now, what will we call it? Stove or stove is actually the top. Oven, right? So oven or cooker. Cooker. In England, we would call it a cooker, which means the whole thing, the top and the bottom. So the oven is the bottom, the top is the stove. Okay, but that one is solid metal. The door is about that thick, right? And it's used uh, wood and stuff to heat it, and it's called an arga. A-R-G-A, -A, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think, an arga. So it was in the farmhouses, it was put in the kitchen, and it was on all the time, and it heated the water, and it heated the house, and they cooked on it. So still in England now, if you go to the older houses of 100 years old or whatever, in their kitchens, they will have an agar, and most of them are original. They're like 100 years old and still working. That's how, you know, tough these things are. Now ovens, you know, a couple of weeks and they're broken. <laughs> um, so that's a, yeah, that's an agar. Yeah, it's in the wrong position here, right? In a, in a, in a, in a real kitchen, they've done it for the picture. It would never be in the middle because it would be at the wall yes. and it would have a pipe going up that heats the water and stuff like that. Yeah, and then it has the, uh, the stove on the top actually had things you pull up because it would always be hot. So everything would always, the agar is always on 24-7, so the house would always be warm. So it was uh, country houses, farmhouses. The yeah, the wood, the wood goes inside. Yeah, the wood burner, and it heats it, and it helps to heat the house and the water and everything like that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, <laughs> this sink here, you don't have them in Taiwan. You you love these tiny little sinks. In my house, I've got this. I think it's from IKEA or whatever. It's like this big of a sink. You can wash a bowl in it. So one at a time, you wash a bowl. You wash a cup. <laughs> My mom in England, her sink is that big, like that, and then that deep. It's called a butler's sink. A butler sink. It's made of uh, stone um, or china. Yeah, it's made of stone, so it's about that thick, that deep. And so why is because in big houses, the, the butler would go around, collect all the plates, put it in there, and then the washer would wash it all up. And thing, if you only had a little sink, where are you going to put it? So it's called a butler's sink. Yes. So, you know, all of these things, you can look at these pictures. As I said, you know, this, this book, for me, that's why I say it can be more difficult to teach. Because some teachers will look at this page and say, oh my god, that's going to take me five minutes. Right? Look at the pictures, read the words, sentences. We're done. 
right? No, just that page. You can take at least two hours. Look at the pictures. How is it different from your houses now? Do you have one of these? Do you do that? All right, the ringer. What do we use now? Right, the washing machine rings it up. You found Alga. <laughs> I'm looking for you. I think it's A G A G A. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, it's A G A. No R. A G A. A G A. Um, so just for that page, you can think of so much to do. All right, so it's about helping your teachers, you know, they don't have to get stuck. Because, you know, another good thing, we don't get tested on this one. Oh. <laughs> more leeway of how to do it but it does take experience okay you know we're tested on the vocabulary but the sentence pattern and the grammar you're not so you can change it up a little bit um, and and work with with your grammar this is the time where you can say okay you know practice how to speak how to use the grammar that you've been writing all the time you know as I said I don't use this for, for writing so that will be just the first page now, do your, do your grandparents still wash things by hand? And then we have the big argument that I had yesterday. Why do Taiwanese washing machines not use hot water? It's so annoying. <laughs> do you notice that? Yeah. Isn't it annoying? It's pretty terrible. <gasps> <laughs> so, I bought a washing machine. So the guy comes and delivers the washing machine. So I say to him, you know, why, why in Taiwan do you, do you not have hot water in your washing machines? You know, this baffles me. He's like, oh, well, you know, Taiwan's weather is hot. <laughs> <laughs> and he really believed what he was saying. <laughs> really? So the reason your washing machines don't have hot water is because your weather's hot? Yes. <laughs> Okay, sweetie, good. Um, <laughs> so, it, it baffles. Our washing machines always have hot water. Uh, our washing machines, we have washing machines that heat the water. So the different cycle, it heats the, the washing. So if you put it on delicates, which would be washing sweaters and yeah. things like that, you put it on cold. Mm -hmm. My mother always forgot, so, you know, sweaters became. <laughs> put them on my dolls. <laughs> Uh, my brothers absolutely hated her. When my brothers were young, you know, boys, they buy all expensive clothes, they've got a job by expensive clothes. My brother was like, Mum, do not wash my sweaters. I will do it. Because <laughs> my mum like, throw everything in there. White t-shirt comes out pink. <laughs> so, it makes me laugh because she buys me nice stuff now and she's like, don't put it in the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold water, Mum. It doesn't matter. Nothing gets washed. Uh, so in our, in you know, it's very difficult for us to understand why you don't have hot water. No, it doesn't bother you, right? But why do you use hot water? Shi Jun. Oh. <laughs> Bacteria. Stains. No. It needs the heat to evaporate it out to kill it. The detergent doesn't kill poo. It. <laughs> Yeah. No. So you can go. You go work with the guy that delivers. The <laughs> uh, stains. You know, whites, um, bleaching. You need the hot water to make the elements in the in the washing powder and stuff mm. like that come out and work. Cold water. They they really it doesn't uh, work. Doesn't work. It's the same, I have animals, so everybody's like, oh, wash your floor with bleach, right? No, it's the worst thing you can use. Number one, bleach is ammonia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number two, all it does is, there's the pee, there's the bleach. <laughs> That's all it does. It sits on top of it. And so dogs' noses are extremely good, and they can smell the pee underneath. So you have to use white vinegar. Just wet it in there. Do they add a water? Soda? You can add baking soda. Yeah, yeah. 
I did a great one because I was Googling. Google is not my friend. Uh, so I put bleach, baking soda, white wine vinegar. My friend's like, are you making a bomb? <laughs> Seriously, Lisa, before you mix anything, call me. <laughs> It smelled really strange. Like, <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I. It will work. I have so many dogs. Something's gonna work. Um, right. So I mean, you know, all these kind of things. Your kids, you know, what they do at home. Obviously, we're older. We can have more conversations. But you know, they can go home. Mom, our washing machines don't have hot water. <laughs> I want hot water. <laughs> right. The next one. My kids love this. Um, always done this. So first of all, just by looking at it, I ask the kids, how many characters are there? Alright, so they'll tell me there's four characters. How many characters are speaking? Okay, so they'll tell me there's eight, there's four, how many characters are in this? Then I'll put them into teams. So if there are eight characters, I will usually put them into teams of four. So each person has two characters. Okay, so then they practice and they have to memorize. And then they come here and perform. Alright, so first of all, you've really got to explain it a little bit. So, uh, when they choose their characters, make sure they split it equally. So, <clears throat> if this dude, I think his name's Rav, I'm not sure. Rav, if he only speaks twice, then they need to have another character that speaks a little bit more. If this character... <coughs> whatever his name is, Londie, if he speaks like ten times, then the other character should only speak maybe once. So that equals it out. Because you will always get the confident ones wanting to do all of it, and then you'll get the shy ones that just stand there and go, hello. <laughs> and then they don't speak for the rest of the conversation. Okay? <laughs> you get them all. Um, Training them. So this is, you know, the first time you do it, it will not work unless you have a very active class, okay? So it won't work. You've got to keep doing it again and again uh, with the other, because every uh, um, chapter has these. So split them into teams. They've got to practice with each other. Intonation again, right? They're, they're acting. And there will be some of them. So again, put a confident, put a loud, noisy, obnoxious, nasty little child in with the shy ones, okay? And then they will pull them out. No, say it like this. You know, and if they're shouting, what are you supposed to do? Shout! Right? So get them to do that. If one of them does it, the other ones won't be so worried about it. Because the most important thing, the shy kids, they're worried about looking stupid. Especially when they get to sixth grade boys. Right? <laughs> Too cool. <laughs> <laughs> Cut off their hair. <coughs> Stephen, right? No, who am I? Marie. Our classes, they don't care. Oh. Our class is bitchy. <laughs> so our class, uh, yeah, they, they, they love doing stuff like this, so they're great. And the girls are a bit quieter. So it all depends, you know, sometimes you get really active girls that don't care. You know, they're, they're out there and sometimes you get the boys and sometimes you get the girls that are really like, oh my god, no. Uh, and the boys that think they're way too cool to do anything. Which I make fun of and then they have to do it. So, this again, I'm not doing anything. I put them in the teams, then I go around and check. They've got to memorize. Things like this, you've got to keep checking. This is not the time to sit down and mark your books. Okay? Because you sit down and mark your books. I've done it, you know, you sit down and mark your books and then they start, you know, fighting with each other and laughing and then when you get them to come up here and perform, they're all like... <laughs> um. So, depending on them, so you've got to go around, keep checking on them, make sure they're um, rehearsing properly and memorizing. Correct them. If you hear things, they can come to you. I always say to them, if you don't understand, don't know how to pronounce, come to me, ask me. <coughs> so they come up to you, remember, don't do it. Don't let them get away with, teacher, this, teacher, this. And I'll just go, mm-hmm. <laughs> what? 
I don't know what they want. Teacher this. I have no idea. What do you want? Oh, how do I pronounce this? How do I say this? Don't let them get away with just... <laughs> <laughs> Make sure they, they give you sentences all the time. The more that you practice, the more they will use it. If you let them get away with it, they will do it. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> coming out, walking around, making sure, you know, if they're doing something like, there's only one person with no alibi. There's only one person with no alibi. He's the murderer! Get them to act it. You're in a play. So when you hear them, you can go around and correct them. What are I saying this? You know, and I might poke them or something to make them jump. <laughs> when they come up, <clears throat> I usually sit at the back. You can sit at the front, but I usually sit at the back and uh, watch them. <clears throat> One thing they'll do is they'll stand in a line. What are you doing today? Oh, I don't know. What are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing that. No. So first of all, talk to each other. All right? Talk to each other. Maybe a little bit of acting. All right? Some of my kids like to do the acting. They're shooting. He's a killer. You know, give them some ideas. As I said, you know, the first time they do it, if you've never done this before, the first time they do it, they'll be dead. <laughs> So then you tell them again. And you can say, okay, we're going to do this again tomorrow. Why not? All right? So give them more time to practice. The first time the whole class went through, oh my God, that was terrible. It was awful. You were awful. But I'm going to give you another chance. And if you can all do it better tomorrow, I'll give you all a chocolate. Or we'll go to the park on Friday. Or we watch 20 minutes of Merlin on Friday. All right? Give them something to work at, and they will do it. They've got longer. Right, come on, practice, quick. What time are you getting here tomorrow? All right, we'll meet here. Right, break time, let's meet. They'll do it. So let them do it first. Give them, you know, that was good. It was loud. It was clear. But it was boring. Right? <laughs> Give them some positive, but this is what you've got to do. All right, I heard it great. You're getting really loud. But now you've got to make it sound different. Right, so give them some positive. I mean, if they're really, really terrible, then tell them that was awful. And don't be afraid to stop. You know, some of the teams, they will play around and they haven't memorized. And you say, right, stop, sit down. Right, you won't be watching Merlin on Friday. You'll be in the next classroom writing tests. Follow through. Right, follow through. It's not about always, you know, of course, I do it. Throw your kids outside. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's an immediate calm down, you know, so that you don't hurt your children kind of thing. Um, but always give them something to do. You know, if you send them outside, tell them to write something. Send them next door. I often send my older kids to baby class. All right, if you want to act like a baby, go to first grade. And so I'll give them something to do and they have to go and sit in baby class and do it. Break time, do something. So it's not just about them standing outside. You know, their parents still do pay a lot of money to come here, so you've got to think of their punishment, what they're able to, to do. Um, <clears throat> and again, as I said before, if you're throwing anybody out of the classroom, make sure they understand why. Always remember there will be parents that call you, and you need to be able to explain to them exactly why. And the students need to be able to, you know, I asked him why he got sent out. And he told me because he was talking Chinese. Done. Parents can't say anything. All right, so always cover your bases. <laughs> um, so we'll do that. Uh, they absolutely love it. My kids really love it. It's a chance to work together in teams and get them moving around a little bit. You, again, you know, imagine they've been sitting in class all day at Chinese school. They come here and they're sitting in class all day just looking at the board. Give them some teamwork. You know, make a leader, whatever. And, but I always say, if he speaks quietly, that's your team's fault. Not his fault, your fault. You work together. So if he's not reading well, that's your fault. Don't come to me and say, ah, Charlie's not doing it properly. Well, help him. That's your team, not my team. Get them to work together, not blame each other. 
rather help each other. So this is a good exercise in working together, speaking everything. So this will take quite a lot of time. Um, then, from there, we go on to the sentence patterns. So this is past tense. <clears throat> I very rarely actually follow this page unless there's something interesting. But I will look at the sentence patterns, past continuous. So then I start, well, 4 o'clock yesterday, what were you doing? Oh, I was, da da da. What were your parents doing? They were, da da da. Right? Let them ask questions. Another idea is they stand up. Number one will ask number two. Number two will answer. Number two will ask number three. Number three will answer. Number three will ask number four. And then you write on the board. Right? What were you doing at six o'clock? I was washing the dishes. Right? Remember I did this last time? Mm -hmm. Washing. Can't use. Right? I was doing my homework. Right? Doing. Can't use. All right? So they've got to use all the uh, verbs. Otherwise, you'll get them all saying, I was doing homework, I was doing homework, I was doing homework, I was watching TV. Right? I was sleeping. So all of them you write down. It doesn't have to be true. It's just them making sentences. So, and times. Alright, can't use 8 p.m. anymore. So they can use last week at 8 p.m. They can use last year at 8 p.m. I don't care. Alright, but as long as it's past continuous. But keep changing the things they're not allowed to use, so they've got to use this. So they don't get lazy. So that can go round. So as I said, the book is open. If you just follow this and do this, it will be very boring and you can do it in 10 minutes. So you got to find out, this is the time, this book is a good way to help where they don't have, where they're having problems, okay, where they're missing parts. What do they have problems with? They don't know how to make sentences. They don't know how to talk to each other. Intonation. Another thing, if you want to practice intonation, when they're asking, you've got to ask each other angrily. <laughs> what were you doing yesterday? I was. Right? So, or you've got to ask lovingly. <laughs> right? You've got to whisper. Right? Different ways to do it. Make it more interesting. They'll love shouting at each other. They'll love loving each other. You know, it's to help them get intonation. Another one, see who's the last one standing. So when you do that, going around, she asks the question to him, he answers, he asks the question to him. If they start going, um, 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 too late, sit down. Or if they ask the question and it's not angry, not angry enough, sit down. Last person standing, get surprised. All right? They want that. Again, they're always, they, they really don't care what it is. A small team. <laughs> um, you know, make it competitive so that they can, you know, if they use the same word, ah, already use that word, sit down. Uh, quick fire. Nothing has to be always so long because otherwise, you know, kids stand there and they get bored. You've got to keep your eye on that. As soon as you see your kids starting to wilt, you know, sitting on the desk, yeah. And they start to wilt like flowers, some flowers, right? Okay, change it up. All right, all right, we'll go over here. Right, okay, louder. Okay, do this way. So you gotta keep watching them the whole time. If it's not working, what do you do? Stop. You can stop. All right, if it's not working, stop. Do something else. Not Every exercise you do will work with every class you teach. Okay, so what I use with this class might not work with my upstairs class. This one gets things, they're, they're ready, they go, they love it, they love competition, they're fast, they think well. I can do this all day with them. Them making sentences, them talking, no problem. That class upstairs, no. can do it for about five minutes and I have to change. They just don't, they just can't. So never be afraid to stop and change. All right? Do it in a different way. So, sentence patterns. All right, I'm going to give you all five minutes break to go to the bathroom so I can drink some coffee. All right, five minutes break, go to the bathroom. So